It is very possible that we are studying the greatest series of lessons that we could study. We are moving into uh, the inner recesses of what is love and how love can be made dramatic in our own lives, in our own homes, in our own community. As you can see, we have studied Earth's greatest secret. Then we began with the love of God the Father, identifying His love as separate from any other love. In this lesson, we are studying the love of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as a separate kind of love, identified with Him as a person. After this, we should be dealing with the love of the Holy Ghost. Then we will go into the various phases of love, the agape principle, the filio lifestyle, the storge story, the eros complex. We are going to move into the depths of this thing, asking God to make it real. If there's any need in our world today more heavy than any other need, it's love. There would be no broken homes if there was love. There'd be no broken hearts if there was love. There'd be no quarreling, bickering, fault finding. When you love a person, it's very difficult to, to find anything wrong in that person because love covers. The Bible says love covers. On page 14 of your teaching syllabus there, from an oriental cross, surrounded by ignorance, the Bible says the mass of the people sat down and watched him die. They didn't know what was going on. They had no comprehension of the importance of that moment, watching him die. From an oriental cross surrounded by ignorance, by bigotry, especially religious bigotry. Maybe of all bigotry, religious bigotry is the worst. In Indianapolis a few days ago, we were sent word by some people that the whole thing was wrong and full of the devil because we didn't baptize in Jesus' name only. And that they were, had no feelings of ever supporting it at all. And uh, <laughs> I said, since when did a little water get to be so important? The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin, and you'll go to heaven whether you're baptized in water or not. Amen. Because it cannot save you. The reason we are baptized in water is a personal witness to the world that we have passed from death unto life. So it is a witness unto God, Amen. but it is not a cleansing principle. How glad we are that the blood of Jesus Christ atones for every sin. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Bigotry is a terrible thing, telling other people they're lost and other people they're wrong. And uh, I don't want to have any of it. I just don't want to have any of it. I just want to love Jesus with all my heart and I love God's people with all my heart. From an oriental cross surrounded by ignorance and bigotry and demonic hatred. I mean hatred that was beyond normal hatred. Hatred for a person that had never shook his hand yet. Hatred for a person that they had never <clears throat> brushed his clothes yet. Hatred can take on so many avenues and the devil can put hatred in a person's heart for something he actually doesn't know anything at all about. Put hatred in your heart for a person that you actually have never seen with your natural eyes. If we would just take time to check on our hates, we might forget some of them, you know, and begin to love people. I don't want to hate anybody because hate came up out of the pits of hell and that's where it's going back to. 
Love came from the golden streets of the, of the heavens above, and that's where I'm headed for. Our world beholds the greatest display of divine love at that oriental cross, surrounded with its ignorance and bigotry and demonic hatred. That's where we see the greatest display, not talk about, but display of divine love, what we call agape from the Greek word. I've often wished that that I could get more love generated in the human hearts. I, I've often said, Lord, uh, how can we turn this thing on that we would truly have agape, divine love for God? Because it was the Lord Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You see, he puts a little <laughs> preposition out in front of it that's really tormenting, if. If you'd have been smart, you'd have been a millionaire. But, you know, the if is still there, and it's two little letters, but they knock you down every time you stand up. And if we had the love of God in our hearts, we'd be a different person. Can you say amen? amen. Jesus Christ was born on planet Earth, making the greatest day of wonder and joy to the world. Even the angels joined in, crying, peace on earth, goodwill toward human persons. And that's what he came to do, is to create and bring into being a revelation of what heaven's going to be like one day. That's what heaven's going to be like. In heaven, nobody will dislike anybody. Isn't that nice? Nobody will dislike anybody in heaven. But everybody will love everybody in heaven. <laughs> Is that too far out? <laughs> but the day that the Lord Jesus Christ touched planet earth, it was the greatest day of joyful wonder the world had ever known. After a full life of agape love for over 30 years, Christ finally executed the ultimate scene of love, not words, scene of love with cosmic thunder and an earthquake on Mount Calvary to get the attention The great veil of the temple that we understand that 12 oxen pulling opposite directions could not have torn it. The veil was so strong that it was split from top to bottom. That God executed it. That God ripped it open. And so now you have an entrance into my presence because of what's happening out there on that cross. He said, there's no more any veil, no longer any high priest that has to come in for you. He has opened the door and split it wide open, the door of love, so that anybody, everybody, can come into my presence personally, individually, continually, and I will see him talk with him, commune with him, and bless him. Are you glad for it? Agape love shook the very bowels of hell. It still would. And Christ's resurrection <laughs> brought forth perfect love for all generations. And in, in, in our society, even sinners on television say, goodbye, I love you. They've never seen you. If you spoke to them, they'd cuss you back. If you got in their way, they'd stomp you down. Are you here? Yeah. They don't know what love means. It's so casual to say, I love you. 
What have you done for them? Have you prayed for them? Have you shared something with them? Love is an act. It is not a word. Love is a movement. It is not static. And until we can get into the divine movements of love, we'll never understand what God was talking about when he says, God so loved the world. This agape love shook the bowels of hell and at Christ's resurrection brought forth perfect love to be shed abroad in the hearts and lives of men and women like us for all generations. In the Gospel of John chapter 15, verse 9, it says, the Lord Jesus Christ speaking, he said, now as a father hath loved me, you'd have to pause there for a moment because I presume that's an un unknowable. As the Father has loved me. He, he could only tell it to us, he, you know. One day in heaven, we're going to see it. We're going to behold and say, hey, what love the Father has for the Son. We're going to be part of it. What love the Father has for the Son. But at this moment, we just have to say, as a father has loved me. There is an agape between the father and the son overwhelming the imagination of a human person. But then he says now, as a father has loved me, so have I loved you. So to, in order to understand the dramatic affection, yes, but beyond affection, love, then we have to see what Christ did for human beings. Willing to be born of the virgin, willing to walk among men as a man, willing to live in a third-rate village full of hate and bigotry for 30 years, willing to feed the hungry, willing to heal the sick, willing to raise the dead, willing to cast out devils, willing to go to Calvary. He was saying, as the Father hath loved me, I have loved you. So you see the manifestation of his activities and you understand the love of the Father for the Son. He said, the Father has loved me, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna love you that way. Then he said, with a command there, so strong. Do you have your finger on it? John 15, 9. Because he brings three parties into focus. He says, then continue you in my love. So, he's challenged us to have the kind of love that the Father had for the Son and the Son had for the world that we are to continue ourselves in that kind of love that we are to reveal and to show and to demonstrate that kind of love. No challenge that big. Never been a challenge that great. That we seek to demonstrate in our daily lives the kind of love that Jesus had for us and the kind of love that God had for Jesus. John 15 and nine. This means, in your point one, this means that in order to understand love, to penetrate love, to comprehend love, not to be playing with it as if it's a little toy, not to be using it superficially when it has no relationship to your inner being. He said to understand love, a person must understand the person and life of Jesus of Nazareth that our only hope of knowing what it's all about, if our only hope of knowing how to live on planet Earth is that we come to understand Jesus. God is love and Jesus came forth from God. If we're going to understand love and the very essence of God is love. Remember I told you that God has power. God has mercy. 
God has righteousness, but God is, say is. is. God is love. What he has and what he is are two different things. The same with you. What you have and what you are are two different things. You are one thing, you have something else. And so we find here that Christ, every thought, every action, was activated through this essence called love, which is the essence of the Almighty. His, his very being is what we call love. This love proceeded not from him, but from the Father. It proceeded from the Father to the Son. As a father hath loved me, so have I loved you. So to love, to know love, is to know the Most High God, for God is love. And so in order to understand the love, then we will understand the Father. Beyond doubt, love is man's greatest wonder that he trifles with, toys with, but not willing to penetrate deep into it to create the essence of it in his own being so that he may reveal God. It is divine love forever displayed for generation after generation. The love that Christ showed at Calvary. By the life and the sacrifice of the man who bore the insignia on his cross that said, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, that there we have the essence of God's love. And there we have the love of the Savior, the Lord Jesus. Love is obedient. And the Bible says he was obedient under the cross. Rebellion is not part of love. Anyone that has rebellion in that area of your life, it is not covered with love. Pure love does not have rebellion related to it. Pure love understands the person he is communicating with and communicates with that person on the level that he should be communicated with. Love communicates with a brother one way, with a mother another way, with a father another way, with a policeman the other way. Love communicates in the same area of relationship between the two parties, even between you and a dog. If you love that dog, you're not always beating on him. Can you say amen? amen. The song says, the love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond higher than the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down with care God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. The love of God, how, how rich, how pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forever endure the saints and angels' song. It's our song. The angels can sing it and we can sing it. It's, it is our song. Love is a song. Love can bring more happiness than any other thing in the world. Loving people are happy people. How beautiful it is to love. Your point number two, Jesus Christ is the world's greatest example of agape. And then we refer that to 1 John 3 and 16. It's a hereby perceive we or understand. Hereby understand we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. <laughs> That'll take care of a lot of things, won't it? Do you know of anybody that would die for you? Anybody, 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 anybody. The greatest place we see that kind of love is actually in the army. 
of the military. The two young men, they fight side by side and they win victories side by side and they pick each other up when they're hurt and, and there comes a relationship there. He says, if, if they throw a bomb and it's getting you, you, I'll fall on it myself. I'll give myself for you. And we're in God's army. We're all in God's army. And, and we should have that kind of love one for another. Can you say amen? When we heard this week of a sadness, it came to some, some ministries in our country. I called my three sons, Brother Murphy and myself, into a closed room. And all we did was to pray for those friends. That's all we did. We just poured our heart out to God for those friends. Anybody that's glad when somebody else gets hurt, you are not demonstrating the love of God. And anybody, when somebody gets hurt, says, oh, talk yourself. You're just a nitwit. It's your problem. <laughs> love has deep sympathies within it for hurt people. Can you say amen? So hereby we understand the love of God because Jesus laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. This portrays forever the inherent force, the power of agape love. That it'll just make you do what sinners can't do and don't know what to do when it ever gets installed within us. But you know what the Lord told me? The Lord told me that you only get what you preach. <laughs> you preach unbelief and you get loaded with it. I feel sorry for these preachers that all they've got to tell you is what they don't believe. I don't ever bother what I don't believe. I'm full, I'm full time in telling you what I do believe. God wants every one of us to be overflowing with a forgiving spirit and a, and a generous spirit and a forgiving spirit. Point number three, agape love is redemptive in nature. We're trying to understand God by love and trying to understand his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, by love. So this agape love, divine love, which is, not, which is not flesh love, has no relationship to the body, body love. But it has to do with the in, inward, inward parts of your being, uh, from here to there, inward parts of your being. In Isaiah 6 and 3 and 9, it says, in, in all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bare them. And he carried them all the days of old. Here was a prophet of God named Isaiah getting very close to understanding God. Getting very close to understand redemptive powers. When he said, in all the affliction, he was prophesying of Christ. Christ would be afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and his pity, he redeemed them. His love and his pity. And he bare them, gave birth to them, brought them into being through love. And he carried them all the days of old. The prophets had glimpses of glory that are shattering. <laughs> he lived 700 years before Christ. And they would become glimpses of this majesty. No doubt it knocked him to the ground. And he didn't have as full of understanding of it as you and I do today. You see. But the, the holy words were flowing through him. In the Revelation, uh, chapter 1 and verse 5, 
and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood.